everybody. Yes, we're here. Hello, everybody, and welcome uh, there. The session uh, has started, and everyone is here. So uh, welcome, everyone, to uh, our week and first week of Moodle MOOC 4. And um, today is Thursday, June 5th. So uh, it's really exciting to uh, be able to have this MOOC and presenters as well as participants from around the um, I'm going to take away my mic. Um, Andreas, even though I'm not, I'm sorry I wasn't able to. There's some kind of a bug on my Mac. So I wasn't able to come in with my name and I had to come in with uh, the presenter's name. So again, apologies. The technology doesn't seem to want to do what I want it to do uh, all the time, but it does 95% um, of the time. So, uh, Andres, maybe you can um, refresh your page so that uh, since you've been in the classroom for a while now, and that'll make your uh, webcam and connection a bit better. All right, so a little bit about yeah. our presenter. Our presenter is from Denmark, and he's going to be talking about his company's uh, program where he uses... Uh, well, he'll tell you all about it. I don't want to ruin the uh, presentation. So uh, there it is, um, our speaker. And I'll mute my mic and come in as me from another uh, computer. So, Andreas, you may uh, start. Your uh, webcam seems to be off. So, um, it's off. It's yeah, it's, it should be. Yeah, it, it is. Yeah, you see yourself, but. Um, I'm getting a message that it's not coming through. Uh, maybe because, as I said, you've been online for a while. So, yeah, that's it. Now we see you. Okay, great. Yeah, now it's coming through uh, perfectly. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for that presentation, Nelly. <laughs> um, <coughs> and, and welcome to all of you. It's great meeting you. Um, this is a, a slightly weird for me because I'm, I'm used to face-to-face -face lectures. So, um, um, so I hope you'll bear with me if uh, the technical stuff uh, uh, doesn't work or anything. But I'll, I'll do my I'll do my best here. Um, my name is Andreas. Uh, I'm a lecturer at uh, Fredericia High School in Denmark, um, and uh, I'm also the director of a company called Lenkul. Uh, a company that that uh, tries to to take some things that that uh, are not so cool about being a teacher and 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 uh, and makes those uh, things efficient. Um, and um, but before I start, I would I would uh, very much like to know where where you're all from. This is as I said, it's slightly weird for me. So, but but if you could uh, if you could tell me where where you're all uh, from, if you could just write it in in the in the chat box down here for Mensuela, um, that's cool. Um, and if you're a teacher and if you teach at secondary school or, or primary school, <coughs> that would be that would be great. Um, Okay. Okay. I have to uh, I have to mute you. I think actually. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, I just have to figure out how this works. Uh, that's muted. That's muted. If you could please, um, uh, what I'll do here is that you can you can interact with each other down in the chat box here, and then um, I'll focus on my on on my presentation, and then. In the end of the presentation, there will be there will be plenty of time for questions and things like that. I look very okay. Uh, it looks okay here. Oh, in India as well. This is truly a global a global lecture. That's that's cool. But let's. Uh, I think we we should get a teaching student. That's good. Cincinnati, Ohio. Excellent. Um, thanks all for coming. Let's but let's get started here. Um, this this uh, lecture is, is on formative feedback strategies and digital marketing. Um, but before I start talking about that, I would like to say a few words about why why I'm I'm a teacher. Because <coughs> um, that's I mean this is something that I'm very uh, very much passionate about. I, I truly believe that that we we have one of the most important and rewarding jobs in the world. Um, the chances that we have to actually impact uh, students at a critical phase in their lives is is, uh, is is just great. I mean, every day we can we can influence these people and give them a, a better view of 
of their own lives and, and teach them something. Um, but there are things that are, are not so great about being a, te a teacher, and, and those things are extremely time consuming. And quite often, they are also very unproductive. Yeah, we build society. I like that one. Thanks, Pablo. <laughs> that, that's it's, it's true, isn't it? That that's what we do. We we build society. We build the future. Um, but but uh, definitely, there are some things that that all teachers seem to dislike, and and that in, that includes me. Um, the first thing that that uh, I found extremely exhausting actually is is when you get a new group of students and you have to uh, let me see how there's a pointer somewhere and and you have to you have to test your students language uh, language proficiency levels um, that's a tedious task and that's something that that we address at Lenko also the idea that we have to construct groups all the time and, and make them efficient is something that I spend. I spent hours on that. Every, I mean, every every month I would spend hours doing that. So so we created a program that that, that addresses that. Finally, uh, the big issue here, which is also the issue for today, is, is uh, marking papers. <coughs> um, marking papers is something that that we all do every single week. Um, and the question is how to make it efficient. Um, so, so today's uh, focus here will be on on the, the feedback strategies and some simple digital tools that can can improve the way that we do things. Um, secondly, uh, I'll be talking about uh, the time-consuming nature of written feedback and and our work-life balance because um, that that's really important because we work a lot. Uh, teachers tend to work all the time, uh, basically. Um, what I've done here is I found a survey um, from from Britain, but it's quite. I mean, this is this is something that happens all over the world. This is from last year, which says that that a primary classroom teacher uh, actually um, actually spend uh, almost 60 hours 60 hours uh, every week working. <coughs> um, and then the uh, secondary classroom teachers, they are they are following. Uh, close behind uh, at 50, almost 56 hours every week. This is this is in the UK, and uh, but this is quite representative actually because we've, I mean, I'm speaking with teachers from Holland and from Denmark and the US, and and this is quite representative. This is this is a realistic picture of uh, of our lives actually. We spend that many hours working. <laughs> and if you look at if you look at how much time is spent marking papers, uh, then we are close to ten hours every week. Um, ten hours every week. That's what we do. I mean, we we mark papers for ten hours every week. That's I mean, it's amazing, isn't it? Um, and 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 scary as well. Um, actually, I would like to to ask you a question about how how many hours you spend marking papers every day. And what I've done is I've I've created a poll here. I'll see if I can. I think if I can manage to, to set it up for you, because um, we'd like to know how much you actually, how much you actually, how much time you spend marking papers here. So if I publish this poll, it should work, shouldn't it? Um, okay, here you go. So can you see the poll? I can only see the options actually, but but I can I can see it afterward when afterwards when I share the results here. <coughs> okay, great, perfect. So, well, well, you uh, let me see when we can we can end the poll here. Option two, option two is the winner. I think let's let's stop the poll and poll. Yeah, and see what the results are like. We'll share the results. Um, now I just deleted it. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Uh, well, at least I can I can conclude <laughs> when I'm retired. That's good. I but again, we did it twice. <laughs> I'm ready for uh, We did it twice in another class. It's really fun doing it again because sometimes people change their minds. So can you do it again? Yeah, I'll do it, yeah, I'll do it again. I'll definitely do it again. But I'll just publish this poll. This time I'll try not to delete it. Oh my God, that's quite scary, isn't it? I mean, look at how many of you actually correct papers more than every week. That is pretty scary. 
One thing is the one thing is the survey. Another another thing is when you see it in in, the, in action, actually. Have you all have you all done it? I voted twice. I voted twice. Perfect. <laughs> in option six or what? I'll just. I'll, I'll just. I think I'll try to say view poll here. See, and then uh, see. No, this is. I'll, 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 I'll end the poll. Is that correct, Nella? No. Uh, Nelly, that's sorry, okay. No. You don't end it. You. Um. I think there's an option there to publish it. I think it says. It says, it says share. Results. Exactly. That's it. Yeah. Like that. Um, so then I should be able to see some. I can't see anything. Can you see it? Can you see the result? Well, anyway, what what I just saw based on on uh, the things that you voted here, then then it's uh, it is actually quite representative, isn't it? Uh, when you look at that British survey, um, and and it makes it all uh, all the more interesting to 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 find out whether we can do things uh, more efficiently. Uh, yeah, but I can't find the results, Nelly. I'm sorry about no, but that. I it's people just, have it. It's just here. I can hide no, other people got it. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I noticed Melissa. Can, Melissa, can you share what you saw? Because I also missed it. I think. Oh, not you. Somebody saw it. Oh, it's loading. All right, we'll take care of that later if there's some uh, technical things here. All right, but what did you I'll, notice? I'll just, what, I'll do, I'll... what did you notice, um, Andreas? Can you share with us what you saw there? Oh, there, we've got the results. Melissa says option six is 12. There, you've got the uh, the results there in the chat box, if you can see that, Andrea. Okay, so, okay, so three once three hours every week is 27%, and option six, so that would be around 12%. Okay, yeah. But that definitely, let's just, uh, I, mean, I think I can reach the conclusion that, I mean, we spent a lot of time doing it. Is, can we agree on that? 12 percent spend more than 12 hours I mean that's yeah that's yeah, that's that's, uh, that's a lot isn't it well anyway I'll end the poll here and what I'll say is that um, I think I think we can well I would like to, to actually see the results myself here so that I can actually conclude something but but let's let's proceed um, okay I think what we can conclude is that that we definitely work more than than normal <laughs> normal people I mean we, we did we work uh, well above sort of what I call an average work week, and we spend a lot of time marking papers. And the question is, uh, is that when we work that much, we have to make the most of, of this time here. And and if we could even if we could even reduce the time that we spend doing it, that would be awesome, wouldn't it? An average work week. Yeah. What is uh, that depends on where you're from, doesn't it? So if you're in if you're in Denmark, it's 37.5 hours. Um, and if if you are in, in the U.S., I suppose it's around 42 hours, isn't it? Some of you might might know more about that than I do. Um, but it is it is at least 60 hours is, is, is way beyond, isn't it? Ah, you've been trying. Okay, good, good. Paper is less. Yeah. Uh, so I did now. We're just talking about marking. Oh, so that would be everything. That would include everything. Uh, when we talk about the average work week, because and then and then you would have to sort of uh, include the hours that you mark papers in, in that. Um, but the question, as I said, is when we spend that many hours doing it, then how can we uh, sort of optimize the results that we get from it, and can we reduce, can we reduce the time that we spend doing it without compromising with the with the work that we actually do? Um, Forty hours a week, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, again, yeah. so again, again, we work. We definitely work a lot. But let's let's proceed. Um, so today, I'm going to show you a few things here. I'm going to show you how I used to mark papers before I founded Lenko. Then I'm going to talk about some various feedback strategies. I'm going to show you a digital tool, and then finally, we'll have time for time for questions. Um, but let me show you how I used to mark papers, and then, and this is pretty much what it looked like. Uh, I spent endless, endless hours uh, doing this, uh, in marking papers, and, and if you look at, if you look at this, uh, <laughs> this sheet here, that I handed back to students, this is what it looked like. It was this sort of completely unholy mix of error codes and utter chaos. 
Um, <laughs> oh, thanks. Am I speaking too fast, Nelly? Yeah, this is a yeah, bad tune. Okay. Of course, of course I'm using a hyperbole. It wasn't that bad. Wasn't that bad. <laughs> okay, great. Okay, great. Thanks. Uh, so, so, so this is uh, this is definitely we can all agree that this is not productive, is it? I mean, if a, if a student receives that, then I mean, most likely they will they won't understand a thing. And I've still I've spent I've spent a lot a, a lot of time doing it. Um, and and this is not this is definitely not productive. We can we I'll show you in a minute what's more productive than that. <laughs> Thanks, uh, Nimola. Um, the second thing that I started doing was that I started used to using systematic error codes. And this is uh, like a typical typical sheet here that you could give your student and say I'm marking according uh, I'm marking a papers correctly papers according according to to this here. Um, and and uh, again, this again, I I have actually found the same. I got to, I received, I ended at the same conclusion that this is not productive either. Because if you look at let's see, there's an error here. I've put an error here next to verb tense. And and uh, if you are a let's say uh, a student that is not so strong, and you see there's there's an error code saying VT, um, and and you say, well, the student will just say, well. What can I what can I do with that? I mean, I don't know. Even, I don't even know what a verb is. Uh, how can I how can I actually improve because I see a code saying VT? This is just too general. I mean, you need more elaborate explanations if you want to improve based on based on on, on feedback. Um, then we got this uh, we got this cartoon here, um, which is which is I, I I think it's hilarious, but but also tragic at the same time. Uh, it's not that clear, so I'm just going to read it to you. Um, on the board, it says endless interrogative constructions, and then we've got the teacher saying, Auxil uh, "The auxiliary verb, which normally appears after the subject, must move to sentence initial position." And we've got the student saying, "What's a verb?" So again, this just goes to show that that um, if you use systematic er error codes, they're just they they're way too too general. Um, they are not elaborate enough. I love peer editing. I'm going to talk about that in, in the later in this in this session as well. Um, and we're going to uh, and and the student proficiency is really important because let's say if you have a very very good student, it's it's very likely that they won't make that mistake, so they don't need the code. Uh, but all the people who actually make a, a simple mistake like a Concord error or something else. They will, uh, they will not understand it if you write SP or um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what is an error? Yeah, that's a good, good question. Um, but but definitely. So so we got. I arrived at the conclusion that systematic error codes is not is not the way to go if you want to improve your students uh, or influence your students' future behavior when it comes to writing. Um, so so first of all, learning. There's no learning. There's hardly any progression. And we're not affecting future behavior. And if you are lucky, you get a few results, very, very few results based on this. And and uh, this is something that I think all teachers all teachers have seen. Um, and and uh, and if you look at, at I've, I've put a pin here with a lot. Uh, and the reason is is actually um, this is what happened. Uh, this is what I I uh, used to to see every every time I handed back papers. I would I would uh, hand back the papers in the classroom, and when they when the students left, um, half the papers would still be lying on the tables, but the student wouldn't be there anymore. So so uh, finally I could pick them up and say, well I spent half an hour on that one, I spent 40 minutes on that one, and and it was just a waste of time for everybody. <laughs> Wasted trees, I like that. Yeah, I should have put a tree there, burning or something. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, so uh, we have sort of uh, we have the basic idea is that that uh, focused formative evaluation is the solution to this problem, um, and and formative evaluation is basically um, as, as I put a quote here from Valerie Shute, uh, saying that that information communicated to the learner that is intended to modify his or her thinking or behavior for the purpose of improving learning. That's that's uh, the idea behind formative uh, evaluation. Uh, the question is how we do this, because this is this is a, a good objective to have um, to to aim for. But how do we actually ensure that 
that our students use the feedback that we give. Um, and what and, and the question is then what kind of feedback can facilitate can facilitate this? Um, and this is what I'm going to, to show you here in a minute. Um, I'm going to show you the extremes here. Uh, first of all, we've got uh, the nativistic uh, theory, this is Chomsky, uh, where, where language is sort of built into people uh, from, from, sort of from scratch, that, that it's an innate faculty. Uh, so we shouldn't really correct anything. Just make sure that everybody speaks, uh, writes, listens, um, reads a lot. And if the more they do it, the more they do it, the more uh, they'll learn, which is definitely true, but 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 uh, I don't think it's enough. We don't believe that it's enough. So the teacher should be sort of this facilitator, making sure that, that it happens. And this is illustrated by, by the, this little guy here saying, you're doing great. Um, then we've got the other extreme, which is uh, behaviorism, that, that, uh, that language should be trained for a system of reinforcement. So if you're if your students are doing great, <laughs> point it out. If they are not, then it should also be pointed out. So, so positive feedback should get positive response, a positive response, and negative. Uh, sort of, if, if they are doing uh, making any errors, then it should have some some negative feedback. Um, but the question is whether we could find a different way to to go about it. Um, I can see that there's something with the. There's something with the video here. You can't see me anymore, can you? Um, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. This is, and this is, uh, this is what we are aiming, uh, aiming for actually. Uh, from uh, uh, Anneli, or oh, no, Teresa. This is what, what we are, what we are aiming for here is that. This is the Lenko approach here is that that feedback should always be positive and constructive. And, and it should be given with regard to the individuals partaking in, in the exchange here. Um, can you can you see me or have, I mean my my audio video thing has frozen. Sometimes um, because so there are people from different parts of the world, uh, Wes IQ needs to uh, equalize so that everybody uh, gets. Um, so sometimes it's better to turn it off. Um, and okay. yeah, so I'll, just, I'll just let it be. It's just but, yeah, but but. Okay. Okay, well, that is, it's still blurry, but the sound is fine. Okay, that's good. That's good. Uh, I definitely agree that negative feedback is, is such a bad thing because it, it demotivates your students to an extent where it's just it's not feasible anymore. So and it just, you're just taking the confidence away from your students. So this is quite should also say. Um, so, so we see uh, feedback as a springboard, uh, and the basic assumption is one that we share with uh, uh, Mr. Sattler uh, from, uh, I think it's, he's from the Griffith University, um, and, and his idea is that the learner needs the feedback, the learner receives the feedback, and he has time to use it, and the learner is willing and able to use the feedback. This is our basic assumption, assumption which is a really positive assumption, but also an assumption that says that, that people should actually get feedback because they can learn from that and they can improve based on feedback. So, so they should use it to, to actively, proactively improve their, their performance. And, and, and uh, we believe that, that it should be focused, elaborate and precise. Uh, so, so, and also that the students have to use, uh, use the feedback in order to uh, correct and, and rewrite their own text. Because if they're not working with your corrections, they're not going to, to learn it. And, and finally, another uh, another important approach here is that there should be multiple approaches. There should be comments, you should give them movies, you should give them exercises, games, all kinds of things that, that target uh, their exact problems. That's, that's what's really, really important, because so that they, they approach their problematic areas from, from various, uh, various angles. This is what makes them uh, this is what makes them actually remember the things that they're that they're learning about. <coughs> um, typical way that that Danish scholars they they uh, they put this the feedback categories. Uh, I mean they, they put them into boxes here. Uh, there were four boxes. The idea here is that that uh, that uh, one kind of feedback is just problem identifying. And this could be as simple as just underlining an error, and then uh, ex and then you sh you expect that that your students can actually react on that. 
uh, and you can actually you can combine all these categories here. Then you, you've got the inquisitive uh, feedback category, where where you try to engage your students in a in a, a communication process about about their errors and, and actually try to engage them and see if they can't learn from that. Then we've got the instructive categories, where where uh, you actually say, well, you've got an error here. Uh, and you have to do this and this and this to correct it. That's the instructive category. Finally, we've got, um, and finally we've got the qualifying, the qualifying uh, category, which uh, which uh, deals with the idea that 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 the feedback should actually modify future behavior and make the students sort of reflect on on uh, the topic. And this could be through uh, movies, games, exercises, things like that. Um, um, and, and the question is whether it's possible because I mean this, it's clear to everybody that if you've got inquisitive, instructive and qualifying feedback that will take a long time to write down. Uh, if you have to write down in a sentence talking about uh, this is your error and you have to do this and this and this to correct it, that will take you a long time to write down. Also, if you want to find appropriate exercises, movies and games that address that exact, that exact problem, that will also take time to find. <laughs> and if you do any shortcuts, then we're back to where we started, that the outcome is the best limit. And, and, the and, and the question is whether it's not just a waste of time and then just go with the nativistic, nativistic theory instead and just say, well, then spend your time ensuring that your students actually speak and, and write and read and so on. <laughs> and, and when, when this takes such a long time, then the question is, when you have a work-life work balance that is already strained to, to the limit, how can we do this? Um, how can we accomplish this? Um, and, and first of all, the first option, which is uh, the first solution, is to control the market. Um, I know that that all teachers, and I think you can all uh, you can all uh, recognize what I'm saying here, is that that when you see an error, it's just like your fingers your fingers are itching. You 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 definitely you want to you want to correct uh, all everything that you see, I and mean, you want to help the students. It annoys you as a teacher to see all those mistakes. I've been teaching, I've been teaching them about about this kinds of these kinds of mistakes uh, for a long time. They're still doing it, so I want to I want to address to address that every single time. But you have to just have to focus that acknowledge, to acknowledge that teachers in the senses of feedback they can handle they can handle all things that that they want to handle. They, they can handle all sorts of parameters when they mark papers. They can they can deal with adverbs. They can deal with prepositions. They can deal with uh, anything, anything, uh, spelling errors. Uh, but the students, your receivers, they can only handle a limited number of parameters at a time. Um, so if you if you give them everything, then they want they will just basically they'll give up because they can't really comprehend all that. So you need so you need to make sure that your feedback is focused. One way of doing it. One thing that we do in in, 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 in my high school is that we teach we teach uh, the students about a certain topic and we say and then we say well this time we're going to focus on. On, on only that. If you, so make, if you errors, make spelling errors, we won't correct it. If you, but if you, um, if you make, if errors, you make errors, errors when it comes to adjectives and adverbs, we're going to correct that. <coughs> um, second, uh, second, another, um, thing another thing that you could do, which is something that I would definitely recommend you to do, is using, is using digital marking. Uh, because the, uh, fact, because the fact, fact of the matter is that students they they make, they make the same mistakes over, over and over again. And this is what, and this is what, what we've been looking at. What we did was that we analyzed thousands of papers, um, and we actually came to the conclusion that that almost all, almost their, all errors their errors can be addressed by very very few comments, as little as as two hundred comments. <laughs> um, so, so, so the solution here, if you want to give uh, elaborate feedback that I can actually help your students, is that that you use predefined comments. They they are they, they are the key to, to making this task manageable, and and that you can actually reduce the time that you spend marking. Because if you, all you have to do is press a button, um, then then uh, it doesn't take you that that long time to, to do it. And if you have focused at the same time, then you can save a lot of time. <laughs> 
sorry, I haven't, sorry, been, I haven't, able I haven't been able to, to look at the chat for a while, but, but, there'll, but, be but there'll be time for questions afterward. Um, um, this is what, this is what the program that, that, I, that I told you that I would say a little bit about, language director. This is what it does. Is what it does. You, can uh, you can see up here that, 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 that um, this is a toolbar that places, that places itself in Microsoft Word. And, uh, and uh, all, all the comments that I, I talked about before, we've sort of we put that in, we put those in, in categories. So we've got everything dealing with with uh, verb tenses. We put that here, and um, so so and, and the prepositions here, genitives here, um, so so that that you can easily find each comment. Then the, users, then the users, they can, they can add, add and modify, and modify delete the predefined comments, and you can actually, and you track, can actually your track your students' progression. So you can give, uh, so you can give them elaborate feedback, feedback but you can track also track that progression from one paper to the next paper. Yeah. Um, the uses, and the uses, you can also add, add reports, and grades, exercises, movies, exercises, movies and everything, is everything is in the program. Um, um, and, so, and, and the users also have, have, have access to, to, to online uh, resources. Yeah, so you can see there's a dictionary function up here and a, and a, 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 web, a web function here uh, that you can use. I'm going to show you that in a minute. Um, um, so, so, so the, the main benefits benefit that you get, get that you, you sort of achieve by, uh, achieve by doing this, first of all, your students, all, your students get better and more elaborate feedback, something that they can actually use. Uh, furthermore, uh, furthermore uh, teachers can actually about save about 30% of the time that they spend marking. If we go along, with, we go along with, with the assumption that, say, that let's say if, if teachers, teachers around, spend around, let's say, between, let's say between, between five, five and 12 hours a week marking papers, I mean, then we're talking about more than 100 hours every every year that that you can actually uh, save here based on using digital marketing. You get better feedback, so you get better feedback and you can save a lot of time. In, in so I'm going to what I'm going to do here is I'm, I'm, I'm going to show you a, a very short um, short, dem short dem demonstration of the program, um, and um, then, uh, I hope then I hope that you that you you, you like it, and I hope that you would like to try to use it. Um, um, just how do I copy this? Oh, there we go. And then, and then I have to show you here. Welcome. Welcome. Okay. This is Spencer, one Spencer, one of my Iowa. friends from Iowa. Let's done this. Show it to you. Can you see it? Can you see it? Welcome to. Land. Welcome to. Land. Welcome to. Land. Welcome to Langcor. Welcome to Lancor. 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 This video will explain what the program language correction can. Welcome to Lancor. Welcome to Lancor. This video will explain what the program language correction. After one year, welcome to Lancor. This. Welcome to Lancor. Welcome to Lancor. This video will explain. Nelly, what do I do here? Welcome to Lancor. Welcome to Lancor. It seems to be buffering. This video buffering. will explain what the program language correction can do for you. It Lang needs to go right through, you know, like in the old days. It needs to buffer right through. Welcome to Lancor. And Welcome then, to Lancor. Um, this video will explain what the program language correction can do for you. Can you share the link? Welcome to Lancor. Yeah, it's this going nuts. Can you share it in the uh, chat box? Welcome to Langcor. Welcome to Langcor. Uh, we do have uh, WizIQ support with us uh, so that um, they can maybe uh, find um, a way to um, fix it. Yeah, the video is off right now. Uh, the link is there. You can um, go into YouTube. Anybody not get YouTube? I'm sorry. I'm sorry. No, I can't hear you anymore. No, oh, I can't sorry hear about you anymore. that. Um, okay. But let me okay. just talk about it. But let me just uh, talk about yes. it then. Um, this, this it's is, just this. This is uh, this is. This is um, or maybe I can share my screen and I can, can use I it. That, can I do that, Melly? Welcome it's, to Langcor. Yeah. This video will explain what the program language correction can do yeah. for you. No, Does it work it now? Doesn't work. No, Welcome to Langcor. This video will explain what the program language correction. Okay, what, what I'll do then, okay, what, what I'll do then instead is I'll show you my screen here and then I'll show you how it works. Is that better, Anelia, or, is that better, Anelia, or uh, can I do that? Can I can sure, I show you sure. my screen? 
Uh, screen sh sharing here. Screen sharing here. Start screen share. This takes photo to 60, takes 60, photo to 60 seconds. Hold on, then I'll just find a Word document. Let me try from another. Oh. Your screen. Can you, can you see Welcome my screen now? Okay. Yeah. Start. Welcome to Lancor. This video off. will explain what the program. Okay. Can you see my screen? Okay. Now? Can you yes. see my screen now? Okay, perfect. Yeah, there we go. Uh, there, we go. So, to, there you this go. Is, so, uh, this is uh, this is the toolbar. It's just placed up here. Um, this is what it looks like. Um, let's say the students. I haven't prepared this, so, so but if you let's say the students make this mistake here, the boy play ball. Yeah, whatever. Um, and you get this mistake. Then you, if you have to write something, you have to write something about subject and, and predicate and things like that. But what instead, what you can do is you can just go to the concord category, uh, and then you say, uh, you say third person singular, and then you get this automatic, um, get this automatic um, uh, comment uh, that's placed here in in the text. So it says here, concord error, remember to add S to your verb when the subject is third person singular, e.g. he knows. Um, and this is what it does all the way through. So you say, she plays X, oh, X men. And if you want to correct that, then you go to um, you go to the uh, class of words here. You say, well, we've got we've got an adjective that should be an adverbial. Uh, there you go. You've used an adjective to describe another word class um, than a pronoun or a noun. You need an adverb to describe it instead. In most cases, you can change words word class by adding a l l y to your adjective. So this is the way that it works. And this is you can address syntactic errors, grammatical errors, semantic errors, you can correct anything. If you've, We've got one over here called uh, analysis, we've got one called language, essay, and if you don't like the the, uh, the comments, the standard comments, I'll show you, you can actually make this quite personal. So if I, I'm just going to give you an example here. So this is one of the mistakes that my students make all the time. You know this one, which and which this one is like the classic error. This one is like the classic error here. So, so I've I've come up with a sort of a very personal comment for that. So, so when I take this one, then you says here spelling error. Which one of you is a witch? Look it up. Um, so you can actually make it. You can make it quite personal. Um, let's say I don't like this explanation here. What I do is that I just go to the edit menu. The first time you do it, it takes, the first time you do it, it takes a second. Yeah, there you go. Um, and then you can change everything. So if you've got, let's say we've got the the B tense here, or we've got the Concord one here, so you can change that one. So if you don't like, if you don't like uh, the example, for instance, you just change it. So you say, well, he plays. There you go. So you've changed it. So now it's your comment. You could write anything. Um, also, uh, if so, if let's try to use it again. So. So this one it was this one, wasn't it? Uh, third person singular. Remember S. So you see that is it has been changed to he plays. So again, instead of writing all this, then you can actually uh, you can actually uh, do it by by using these predefined comments, and you'll find that I'm sure you. I mean, you're all familiar with that. That that your students will most uh, they will most definitely uh, uh, repeat their, their their mistakes over and over again. So you don't have to do that anymore. This is this is what makes it so easy and so fast uh, to correct. And finally, you actually give them because this is um, you give them some elaborate and an elaborate uh, comment here because uh, if you before what I would have done for this, uh, I would have sat here, the boy play ball. I would have written SP or something like that or C for court or uh, and and the student they don't know what to do with that. This is what I showed you in the beginning here. So, so remember, just now you get a good explanation that the student can actually use. You you, you explain why the error is there, and then you explain what to do with it. Um, so this is where we're talking about different feedback categories, and you can you can use all the feedback categories categories that you like. Um, and then, as I said, there are there's uh, you have access to uh, to various um, to various online uh, resources. So if let's say you don't know the word excellent or whatever, then then you just uh, you just uh, press Ask Dictionary. And it sends you directly and it sends you directly to 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 a dictionary on an online dictionary where you can 
where you can get the definition. Let's say you're afraid that you're, uh, you think that your student has plagiarized something, then you just highlight the entire sentence and you ask web. <coughs> And then it it, uh, and then it, it, uh, it can show you immediately whether this has been been copied from the internet somewhere. So it just it just takes so it just, it just so takes, this is this uh, it just takes all the things that I I was uh, all the things that I was frustrated about, and then it just makes it easy. Uh, it I don't have to waste time. Uh, I don't have to waste my time on something that is um, isn't beneficial for anyone. Um, and, and this is the idea here behind this program. Uh, another thing that I that I uh, thought was important when when I designed it was that that um, it's it's sometimes it's quite. I mean, it's, you correct a lot of papers, and it's difficult to remember. I mean, what was wrong last time he did he, he wrote something, and and then you can actually you can check that. So because the, so we've included a stats menu. Um, as I said, the first time it just takes a few seconds. Um, so you can actually see all the errors here because we used we used four different errors this time. So you see them here, um, and then you can print this report in your student's document. Um, and uh, if you want to add some exercises this time, it was it was Concord. So we can find we can find Concord here. Go to English at yeah, high school. We'll go to uh, SP agreement, and I can add a few exercises. Oh, I put it twice. Well, anyway, yeah, and I put it twice again. There you go. There you go. That was one. And I can I can add that in the report. So here you go. And I can save. I can save the grades and things like that. I won't do that. You can see that. You can see that in the demo. Um, so here's here's the report. Uh, that that uh, is printed in the document, so you can see the errors, uh, and you can get the exercises. So your students can actually go directly uh, to this exercise and and actually work with the the errors that that they are, uh, have that they have problems with. Finally, you can also, if you if you want to use a different toolbar, you can just choose another one, or you can make your own. So I'll choose this one with movies. So let's see, this one is with movies. So if I add another comment this time, there should be uh, there's a movie here uh, that this deals again with, with the Concord category that we're working with now, but it could be anything. Um, so what we do is we take this one, we press control, and then press the link. And then it sends you, and then it sends you uh, directly to a, a movie or that, that, uh, that deals with uh, with uh, 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 Concord subject web agreement. There you go. So, so your students can actually uh, can, they can see your comments, some some very elaborate and, and uh, um, comments that can actually explain something for your students. They can see a movie, they can do exercises, <coughs> um, and and then they can correct their own things. And this is something that they actually learn um, also also next time when they have to. To, uh, they they learn it and they remember it for for next time they have to write uh, an uh, an essay. Uh, let me just go back to the chat room now. So this is this is basically these are the basic functions of the problem. But I would strongly recommend you to to have a look at to have a look at uh, at the at the demo. It takes about seven minutes and it just explains everything. And <coughs> Spencer is quite good at doing it. So so if you if you do that, that would be great. Um, great. Let's see, I just have to exit this. Uh, so this is this is the idea here, and I really hope that you would like to try it out. Um, and you don't have to pay anything for that. Um, let me see where I go to the next one because this is where I said we need you here because uh, this has been thoroughly tested in in, in Denmark and it's very popular, uh, but we we haven't tried it at all yet. So I'm sort of hoping that that teachers worldwide would like to to uh, to try this um, and and um, that would really help us out. So and and all we'll we'll ask for is if you could fill out. Uh, two short questionnaires during during the the year here. So um, if and then if you um, let's see how I do this. Uh, if you go to to this link here, I'll just take this from Tom, and then I'll say this one. If you just add slash mooc, this one, 
if you use this link here, if you use this link here uh, afterwards uh, when we're done here, then you can actually you can download it for free. Uh, don't have to worry about prices or anything. Uh, you can use it for one year and then just let me know if you like it, and uh, that would be that would be excellent. Um, as I said, I really hope that you can save a lot of time, and and I hope that your students will will appreciate uh, the, the the different kind of. Um, um, there is German as well. We have German. Uh, we have German in German, and we have German in English, and so so you you can you can use very uh, various um, uh, profiles. Then, <laughs> then uh, the the question is who should actually give this feedback? And this is uh, one of you asked me about peer feedback uh, before, and this is uh, this is why I said this originally this was a tool that I designed uh, for teachers. Um, and and um, so the idea was that I wanted to save time and I wanted to give them better feedback. But then my students actually, uh, Polis isn't there yet, but but it's quite it's quite um, it's quite easy to um, um, it's it's quite easy to to make your own toolbar. It's, it takes it takes. I mean, if you have to write, I mean, all you have basically all you have to do is you have to sit down and then figure out what kinds of mistakes do do uh, your students uh, often make, and then uh, and then write them down because you only have to do it once, and then you have them forever. Um, if you, um, um, we are sort of trying to find someone to do it in Polish. So if you're interested, then let me know. Um, another thing here is, as I said, my teach, my students they actually ask me why why can't we do this ourselves? This is so this is the peer feedback that we that we did here was actually based on my students' uh, wishes here, and, and we did that. So what I did was I divided the students into groups and then I let them construct their own toolbar, which um, was which was actually quite interesting and and really really good. This these are actually the students. This is these are some of my my students here and. They, I think they got the Concord category actually. Uh, now that we, we talked so much about Concord, um, and they really liked it. Um, so here's an example on, uh, that shows you how you can do it. Uh, first of all, you assign a category uh, to to each group, um, and then the groups they have to consult their grammar books and all all sort of online resources and things like that. They have to uh, write down their own comments based on <coughs> on the research that they're doing, and they have to. They have to find movies and exercises that they can include in their in their uh, toolbar. Then they have to present their categories and comments in class. So they have to they actually have to give a presentation. Um, then they have to share their categories and construct sort of the combined toolbar, if you will. Um, then this is the first part of the job. When when that's done, the groups they have to write papers, or they can do it individually. Then they, when they've when they've done that, you swap the papers, and then you make sure that another group uh, marks uh, the other group's papers, so to speak. Um, and then uh, the groups get their papers back, um, and you can actually uh, uh, they have to rewrite their own papers based on the other group's comments. Um, and then they have to explain to each other why they've chosen the comment that they've chosen. Um, and and uh, this is something that well it takes some time definitely but but uh, I mean uh, the amount of of uh, how should I how should I put this in a good way I mean the outcome is amazing it's really really amazing um, so this is this is this is this uh, is this is really um, this is something that I can highly recommend uh, it takes time as I said. But the, they benefit from it to to a degree that I've never seen before, and I've been teaching for like 12 years now, and I've never seen anything like it. And the best thing was that they actually um, they actually think it's funny. Um, so, so so normally when I when I teach grammar, I haven't been able to sort of arouse their interest in a way, and uh, all of a sudden when when uh, uh, when they do it uh, on their own, uh, then then uh, you'll see that that. They actually they become quite passionate about it. They they want to write some good comments, some really elaborate comments that that they can uh, that they can use that they can be proud of because they know that the other students the other students are going to uh, are going to read them and and uh, and then you can actually as a teacher next time you have to to correct it you can use your 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 uh, students uh, toolbar so that's 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 pretty. Uh, 
I think that's pretty cool, actually. <laughs> so, so I'm going to do that again, uh, definitely, um, and I, I can highly recommend that. Um, finally, just a few references. Uh, I mean, all all of the things that I've said. I mean, it's just it's not just something that that that, that we say. Uh, this is based on on uh, on thorough research. I mean, we we're using scholars such as Jen Hattie and uh, uh, Dista and Rinica and Shoot and, and so right now you can see you can see them here. You can you can uh, there are there are several more that we are interested in. Uh, day, for instance, but you can, uh, if you want uh, an, an, a longer list on this, then just just write to me, and then I'll send you some good references uh, for for giving feedback. Um, then, uh, well, now it's it's time for uh, it's time for uh, for questions. I, I'm sorry, I couldn't see all your comments there because I'm, as I said, this is the first time that I'm that I'm on 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 MOOC, uh, online. So uh, thank you, uh, thanks, Tom. Um, uh, if you have any questions, just just feel free to to ask me about about anything here. Um, thank you, thank you so much, Andres. I want to I want to tell uh, everyone here that I felt blessed. I don't know, Andres. I never told you this, but I felt <laughs> blessed when yeah. I uh, encountered uh, your program. Uh, the core lang because I think that first of all, it's amazing, and I'm uh, and I'm so. Uh, please to to know, Andreas, that you are a teacher, an EFL teacher, an English mm. language teacher, whose English is amazing. You know, first of all, I have never heard a single mistake in your spoken English, and and your written English is just as perfect. I mean, the fact that a teacher would try to find a solution because you know most of the solutions that we have online these days are from tech people and tech people are not teachers and when I have to work with tech people I need to convince them that what they're doing is wrong from the perspective of instruction and learning and we've got a person here who has developed something as a teacher to make his life easy and that's exactly what technology is supposed to do it's supposed to um, help teachers and learners and not you know uh, work from the technology point of view. So I think this is absolutely perfect. The fact that um, we can help improve the program is super uh, because um, it is possible for teachers to get together and make this happen. So Andreas, I'd like to thank you. There were some questions here um, from the participants. If you want to look at the questions, one way of doing it, Andreas, is to pop out the uh, the chat there's an arrow there you can pop it out into the center of the screen and then you uh, are in a better position you can make it larger and you're in a better yeah can you yeah, yeah? Can you, can I did you, that you, I don't know if you can see what I'm doing <laughs> can you see it um, I can see it. what because yeah. you can do it on an individual basis if you go to the chat and simply uh, pop it out it's there's an arrow just pop it out and yeah. and then you can make it large. You can just kind of uh, stretch it in every way. No. Some of the, there was a question here by Stella. Sorry, uh, go ahead. It's bigger, it's bigger now, at least. Uh, I'll see if I can. Well, uh, yeah, I can make. It yeah, you can make it as large as your screen, because it, nobody will see what you're doing. It's it's only on your screen, so don't feel. So okay, feel comfortable. Yeah, By now. the way, everyone can do it. Yes. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not. <laughs> here you go. Uh, here you go. Uh, yeah, yeah, I saw a few uh, questions. Um, uh, and Averb, uh, <laughs> Pablo, I, I think that's a mistake. Is that a mistake in our program, or is it just is it just me that have I written Averb or what? Well, anyway. Okay, let's see. Uh, Nelly, can you, um, track Nelly, can you track keep track of the sure, questions? Sure. I'll, or... I'll be here, here. There's one question here. Can you use the toolbar for from Tom? Can you uh, use the toolbar for adapting another language? Yeah, yeah, anything. This is yeah, just, yeah, anything. This is just. I mean, this is just the toolbar is just a framework, uh, basically. You can, uh, you can, uh, you can also, if you want, it doesn't necessarily have to be languages. If you want to, 
uh, I mean, if you if you are a history teacher and and you correct uh, papers in that subject, you could you could uh, you could uh, create a toolbar that that uh, that addresses the questions uh, that that is uh, that that are necessary to to focus on in history. So you can do it for any any uh, any language or subject that you want to address, as long as long as the things can be uh, can be handed in uh, by using Microsoft Word. Uh, then, then uh, language corrector will work. Okay, there's another question. Does it support cyclic? What is that? To, to tell you the truth, as you said, as you said before, I'm 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 a yeah. teacher, so so you would you would have to ask my tech guys about that. Um, it works with the last uh, two or three. I think it's the last three versions of of Microsoft Word. The most recent. I think the free most recent version. Your your voice seems to be going backwards. Can you speak up? No, oh, yeah, that's it. Uh, I'm talking yeah. about, about, I'm talking about, about the, the versions uh, where where you can make it work. Uh, the Word, the Microsoft Word and versions. I, I said, I and I, as I said, I think it's the 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 most recent, the, the free most recent okay. versions of of Word. I think it works. Again, and again, uh, with Chinese, uh, if if Microsoft Word supports uh, Chinese. Then we support Chinese as well because we are basically just an add-on for uh, for uh, for Microsoft Word. This is what we do. We just we're just taking the functionality of Microsoft Word and then we are sort of making it better, so to speak, more accessible. Uh, Spanish is there, uh, Nelly. Uh, Chinese is not, um, but but you. I mean, uh, if you see a language that that isn't there that you would like to be there, then uh, give us a call or send us an email. Then, then we'll we'll talk about it. Um, well, there were some other questions as well. Uh, something about whether it worked with MOOC. Is that correct? Is that correct? So have I lost you here? So have I lost you here? Or yeah, we can, can you hear, hear me? You. I'm just trying to find questions here. Estella asked a question. I can't seem to find it. So Stella, can you uh, add your question again? Ah, there's a question about Moodle. Yes, we talked about, I talked about this with Andreas uh, about Moodle, uh, integrating it into a Moodle activity. Um, yeah. Yes. Yeah, it, the, idea here is, I mean, the idea here is, I mean, as I said, as I, as I said before, is that if you, I mean, if, if Word can do it, we can do it. So that, because, as I said, this is, this is a uh, language corrector, corrector is, is basically, it becomes a part of Microsoft Word. It's just an add-on for Word. So the minute that, the minute that, uh, that you, uh, if, if, if the program that you want to, to use to integrate this, if that works with Microsoft Word, then it will work with, with the language corrector as well. And by the way, the editor on Moodle does support uh, Word documents, so you can actually just paste it. Um, that's all you need to do yep. in the editor. Uh, but, mm -hmm. And you don't need, uh, the, the students don't need the program, uh, because this is uh, what, they, what they get back from you is just a Word document. So you can actually save it and upload it, not just paste it, but you can also upload it into an assignment yep. on Moodle. So that's exactly. Fantastic. So, so you could, if you can, if you can upload a word, a word document, then you can get the comments because the comments that that language corrector gives to uh, to the students is just a part of the word document. Also, and that goes for for the stats report as well, and the the exercises and the movies, the links for for movies. That that that's the same thing. <coughs> and there's a question about and there's a question about this. Um, I can't see it. There's something. Uh, yeah, yeah, the teacher has the toolbar. Yeah, yeah, but I, I mean, if you if you want the, some of your students to have it, if if you want your students to make their own toolbar, then the the the, the, the students will will need to download the program as well. So if you want to use the peer, so if you want to use the peer the peer feedback idea. Then, then they need the program. Thanks, Melissa. Thanks, Melissa. Whether your colleagues can it, use whether it? your colleagues can use it? Definitely. Yeah, definitely, definitely. 
Yeah, what about peer editing? There's a question there by uh, Teresa. Yeah, that, then they, yeah, need, that, access. Then so they need access. So what I would do here is uh, I would just, uh, if you want to try this with your with, with a class, then we have this two, two months for free version that they can download, so they will have access to it for, for, for two months. That should be plenty to to uh, to go through a um, a session uh, where you do some various grammatical tasks and, and assign various categories to, to to classes. So you can do that definitely. Um, well, uh, the thing is that iPad isn't ready for Microsoft Word yet. Um, the minute that 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 it is ready, then we'll we'll do it. I think Microsoft is working on an uh, on a version that can work with iPads uh, and iPhones as well. Um, but but uh, great, Anna, it sounds great. Just and let us let us know if you have any questions. But I definitely, I I think that uh, that it won't be long before uh, it will work uh, on iPad. But by the moment, the technical, by, by the moment, the technical, um, side, is technical side is not ready for it. You can use it on Mac. That's you can use it on Mac. That's true. Uh, that's it true, Nelly. That so it works on Macs. In Mac, it's a little bit different because it's a separate, it's a separate program. Uh, at the moment, uh, well, that depends. I mean, what other countries are using it? Well, um, at the moment, De Denmark is sort of the main. Uh, uh, sort of country at the moment because this is where it started. I mean, this is brand new. I mean, this is this program has only been. Uh, I mean, actually, to, to tell you the truth, it's only been on the market for uh, for a few months actually. Um, so it's brand new. So it's a new thing. But uh, we are setting up agreements with uh, with uh, a publisher in Holland, and uh, we are setting up agreements with uh, teach, uh, teachers and sales representatives, various in various. Uh, um, uh, in various uh, countries, for instance, England and Austria, and uh, well, so we we are we actually just we've just reached Argentina, actually. So that's it's quite funny. Um, so so uh, and I got a question here from Melissa Silva. Will it be available for college to adopt? Yeah, definitely. I mean, it's just just um, you can just change the, the the comments. So if you think that the level uh, that the level that the comments are on at the moment isn't high enough, then you can just change that. Uh, we had we do have classes that do. Uh, yeah, well, that's, that's yeah. Well, that's that's the thing. I mean, we it costs uh, a lot of money to develop this, to tell you the truth. So, so, uh, so we can't sort of the idea behind the two. Of course, the idea behind the two months for free is that that, that people will eventually try to to buy it. Um, that's the idea. Have a great day, Jarek. Have a great day, Um yeah, I mean, if, if you want your entire uh, entire college to to purchase it, then we'll just we'll find a good deal for you. But it uh, it's quite inexpensive for individual teachers, as I understand it. Is that correct, um, Andres? No, it's not. That. No, it's, not it's not that. It's not expensive. It's, it is. I think. Well, how much is it? I can't remember. Uh, Cecilia is, is part of of Lenko. She's been answering uh, some some questions here. Uh, let me just. I can't. Honestly, I can't remember the price. That's just, oh, that's, that's embarrassing, isn't it? I should. I should know what, what our own products. No, I'm talking about. Sorry, uh, Andreas. I'm talking about the individual, not the um, not the institution. Yeah, uh, an yeah. Uh, an individual can buy it if they want to. This. I'll just find the price for you. Do you want? I can find it in the US dollar. And say, uh, one second. I'll find it for you. Uh, I think it's shop. If you go to the shop, uh, then I think it was ninety nine dollars, wasn't it? Or I, I remember a nine somewhere then. Ninety nine. That's for one year. Ninety nine. That's yeah. for one year. Yeah. So ninety nine dollars for one year, and you can get it for three years for one ninety nine. Oh. Yeah, that's. I remember the ninety nine. So it's it's ninety nine dollars yeah. for a year. For one. For one. Right. Year. And uh, what is the one ninety nine? That's for three years. That's for three years. Oh, that's for three years. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember the two numbers. Yeah. Okay, for three years. Okay. Yeah, I think that's really reasonable. 
Euros, 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 as I said, I mean, if, if, you, uh, if you can save more than 11, 12, 13, 13 days a year, then, then I suppose that, that is but not I think that you much. also have an affiliate program, which is really um, encouraging for teachers who bring, like, a friend brings a friend kind of thing. Sorry, I couldn't hear that. Uh, I'm sorry, I think I you also have that, an affiliate then. program where a friend brings a friend, or and then you get it for uh, cheaper or something, right? Am I correct? Yeah, you can. I mean, yeah, you can. I mean, I mean, this is what we know. We do school arrangements. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so if if a school wants to to purchase it, then we find a way for that. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry, yeah. You, I, can't uh, I'm, uh, you, I can't really hear. It's, it's uh, the, the connection is not. Oh, is it? Right now. Yeah, it's it's a lot of bandwidth i guess because there are people from all over the world all right so can we continue this um andreas there are lots of questions and lots of ideas uh, that people would like to share with you um i think tom do you have the link at your fingertips or anyone have the link to uh, the moodle mooc on wiz iq and the course feed oh there it is thank you tom um all right so we can continue this andreas there's the link that tom has added um to I'll the just, um, yeah. in the course feed okay if you click on that and on the left you'll get okay. the course feed we can continue the questions and it doesn't have to be time-based yeah says, people uh, it says pardon when you when you press that link when you when you press that link it says bad oh request bad request oh my gosh all right so let's try it again oh. what i can do though Wait, is I I'll, could, I'll get I mean, it i'll get the right uh link here that's not Thanks, a problem guys. Uh, let me get the right. Yeah, there Nelly? it is. Yeah. Yes, some. Nelly? Yes, I'm here. Nelly? Uh, no, Nelly oh, this is for Nelly Gonzalez. Oh. We actually we are having uh, the Spanish version has just been translated by a, a guy from Colombia. Yeah. So so so, so it should be perfect for for Colombia. There yeah. it is. I think so. We can continue. Yeah. Does that work for you, Andres? That link that I just added. Yeah. So I have to do so what? I have to do what? Uh, I have to, uh, yeah, I've just, it works, this, links, this link okay, works. Okay, go I to can, the course so, so. feed. The course feed is the discussion. You can just add to the course feed and, uh, hi, um, I'm here for questions or something like that. And then we can continue the discussions. Uh, People can add. Is that below? Oh, so it's below, is that below, oh, so below discussion. Yeah. Hi. So I'm so here. I'm oh, here. you just added that? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay, excellent. <laughs> you see how wonderful technology is? We can do so much on the spot. All right, so let's see. Uh, the course feed. Let me refresh the page so I can see what's there. I don't see you yet. Can it? Uh, I've, just here, uh, I've just written here. Hi, I'm here in the discussion area. I think Start a discussion. Okay, let me refresh that so that I'm recording this. Um, Hello, your picture. Hello, your picture. I don't see you. I mean, I don't see it. I only see um, in the courseware or in the. Uh, in this, is just, uh, this is just in that, uh, that, in that link that oh, you, you gave did? me. Oh, you did? How come I don't see it? Does anyone see it? Andres, I don't. Did you add it in the middle? Secret here. Uh, no, this is just. No, this is just. If well, there's a picture yeah. of you which says about the instructor. Uh, oh, you added it under your class. Is that it? No, no, no. No, I, I no, no, no. I, I just. I mean, if you look at the link that you gave me, uh, the Moogle yeah, Moog looking, for. Yeah, I'm looking for it, it, and I don't oh. seem to. I see Cheryl. Yeah. I see and Cheryl. And below, below your, below your, below your, below your picture, a, there is a field called discussion. Yeah, right. But I don't see it. Does that, everybody else see yes. it? Okay, maybe it hasn't um, come up on mine. I can write. Did you post it? Did you click on no. post? Yeah, yeah, okay. Really? Yeah, yeah, Does okay. everybody else see it? Okay, there, Tom has added a long uh, URL that does should work? be working. Uh, uh, I've just written, does it work okay. now? And posted it. So the two top. So the two top uh, at at the top of this discussion uh, thread should be should be from me. And I can see. And I can see. I can see Mabarek Akadas saying thanks, Nelly, for this great oh, really? professional development okay. opportunity. So it must be just my site. 
but but can we but but can we, we but we can also just go on in this in in, in the the classroom here or, or is is that impossible or how's that what do you mean no that i think that's the that's the place for it that's where we can um continue the discussions so I'm, I'm yeah you're in the right i'm, I'm running no, out you're of right, time you're in the right place that's perfect and I also wanted to share okay, so with you, it. one of the participants was kind enough, and I want to share it with you. Oh, there, the session's going to be over. Was kind enough to share this link of the, um, of the poll. Andreas, if you're interested in the poll, someone had captured it, and I think, I think it's Jarek. Uh, Jarek was kind enough uh, to capture. Yeah, so you okay. can take a look at that and see what the results were. So thank you, Jarek. Perfect.